I wanted to walk you through the price floor case of that prune problem we did in class last week. Anyway, here's the application exercise that we did not get to uh, last week. Notice that the uh, demand curve is given algebraically. Quantity demanded equals 6 minus P. Quantity is in hundreds of mil millions of pounds of prunes per year. P is in dollars per pound. The supply curve is given by QS equals P over 2. And the problem asks us to find what is the deadweight loss. And off we go. I've given you a few choices. We'll get to that, uh, but, but let's do the problem carefully, start to finish. So I've, I've written out our supply and demand equations. I wanted to remind you just how to do the algebra here uh, in, in the graphing in case you're rusty on these skills, as I noticed some of you were. Well, we know that the market equilibrium we're looking at a basic supply and demand um, problem, we know that equilibrium condition is that in equilibrium the quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal. And that means that P over 2, which is the quantity equal to the quantity supplied by definition, is equal to 6 minus P. So I can Add P to both sides, so I get 3P over 2, or 3 halves P, is equal to 6. And then I multiply both sides by 2 thirds, and lo and behold, P is equal to 4. I can plug that into either one of these expressions. I'm just going to plug it into the easier one. Q is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 200 million because of the pounds per year, because of the units we had chosen. P is dollars per pound. Be careful about that last step. Uh, notice, uh, just to double check your work, you can also plug the price into the other function, and you see that 6 minus 4 is also 2. And if, if you ever get a, a difference there, it means you made an algebra error. It's a good way to check your work. Uh, just to um, remind you of how to graph these things, I haven't gotten to the price floor yet, but I want to just remind you about basic skills. Uh, when we graph, it's because we use price, we, we draw price on the vertical axis, it's often easier to work with inverse demand curves, which is simply these same functions just expressed with price as the dependent variable. So P is equal to 6 minus Q. I'm just adding P and subtracting Q from both sides, and then I can multiply the supply curve, the expression for the supply curve, through by 2, both, multiply both sides by 2, and I get P is equal to 2Q. And I, I drop my superscripts. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, um, then when we draw, we know we've, we've got price on the vertical, quantity on the horizontal. Let's remember that's 100 million pounds per year. Price dollars per pound. We go to graph that. We know we've got these expressions, y equals mx plus b. So for the demand, I'm looking at a line that has a y-intercept of 6, and it's got a slope of negative 1, so it's going to have a x-axis intercept of 6, of course, 600 million pounds per year. And then my supply curve, there's no uh, y-intercept, so that means it passes, this line passes through the origin. It's twice as steep as the demand curve. I've probably overdrawn the steepness of that curve, but it's approximate. So equilibrium price is 4, equilibrium quantity is 2, and of course these are 200 million, and there we have it. Now, as far as graphically to, to implement the price floor, notice that by law, 
sellers can't charge a price less than five. Sellers want to supply if if the price is five, sellers want to supply two point five hundred million or uh, that would be uh, 250 million pounds per year, but buyers only want to buy 100 million pounds per year. And of course, you need both a willing buyer and willing seller, so the quantity of uh, prunes sold in this market will go down. Um, now, deadweight loss, notice that at that price floor, we've limited the amount of prunes sold in the market, and Selling one more prune would benefit buyers by more than it would cost sellers, and that's lo that surplus is not gained by anyone in the economy. And that's true for all those 100 million pounds of prunes that didn't get sold in the price floor case. So this shaded area is going to be dead weight loss. And that's, we're going to need this value too, right, to get uh, to get the height or the, the base of that triangle. I, I usually think about turning that triangle on its side and, treating this vertical distance as the base. So I can plug one in for my quantity on the supply curve, and I find that the price is two. So I've got a triangle with a base of three and a height of 100 million. I think, remember, I'm turning it on its side. And our dead weight loss is equal to one half times base, that was just three, times height, that was 100 million pounds per year. All right, so what, what, do I, what am I left with? One half times three is 1.5, 100 million. I'm left with 150 million dollars per year and deadweight loss. Let me go back. I crashed my uh, my um, DoodleCast uh, program, but, but anyway, the we see that our answer would be D, 150 million per year. I wanted to show you one more thing. I know I'm going a little bit long here, but we can do this welfare analysis a little more carefully. The DoodleCast crash wiped out my 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 notes from the earlier portion of the broadcast, but I think we're done with that and it should come through. So I'm going to leave it at that. Here I've got that same graph drawn a little more neatly, but notice what we can do. We can disaggregate welfare effects, consumer surplus, producer surplus, and then the sum of those two is total surplus. I can look at that unregulated market case, I can look at the price floor case, then I can look at the change. We, this gives us a nice tool, I've shown you this in class before, it gives us a nice tool to keep track of who wins, who loses under this policy, and it reviews our consumer and producer surplus con concept. So under the market outcome, remember we've got 200 million sold area under the demand curve above the price, $4 a pound was the price, we've got A, B, C, producer surplus, area below the price, above the supply curve, D, E, aggregate surplus, A, B, C, D, E. Now, price floor, things change. Price floor, notice that now price is at $5 a pound, and the government has to allocate the rights to produce because sellers want to produce two and a half times that amount, but there's no buyers for them. So the government's got to allocate production rights. Usually it grandfathers in, you know, who, who produced them before the price floor. That's who gets them later. Um, there's problems with that because the government doesn't know who's, who the low-cost producers are. Anyway, um, under the price floor, consumers now pay $5 a pound and only buy $100 million. They just get A in surplus. Producers, though, sell fewer pounds of prunes, but they get a higher price. So they gain 
area B, and but they lose area E. The way I've drawn it here, it looks like B might be the same size or maybe even smaller than E. We could take that area, but I don't want to have you watching the screencast all night long. Usually, for agricultural commodities, the demand curve is much steeper than that, and an area like B is always going to be bigger with a steep demand curve than an area like E. Let's get back to our original problem. All right, total then. Oh, I jumped ahead to the change. Let's walk through it a little more carefully. Uh, producers under the new one get area B and D, and they've gained area B and lost area E. And then finally, we get A, B, D as total surplus, and we see consumers are the unambiguous losers here. They're paying more for less, but we see that some producers gained. They got to sell prunes at a higher cost, but some producers lost. They used to be able to sell prunes, and now they can't. Uh, on net, we get the dead weight loss area C and E correspond to surplus that we used to have, but nobody picked up. We had it in the competitive outcome, competitive market outcome, but we lost it to everyone. It did what, some of that surplus B was transferred from consumers to producers, but areas C and E worth of surplus were just lost entirely to the economy, and that's what we call dead weight loss.